Hey, and welcome now to the Quest Golf Academy. And today's going to be a video about how you can maybe use some of your existing equipment to create a fairway finding low bullet drilling driver. Fairway finding low bullet driver. Listen, it's not the catchiest name for the driver, but hey, head down into the comments and let me know what you think this one should be called. Now here is the basis for the club. It is an eight degree M6 driver. Now, as far as I'm aware, this driver, this eight degree, this isn't available at retail. I managed to pick this up off the tour truck. And the reason I've got it eight degrees is that I've cranked the loft right down. So this is now a six degree driver pretty much. But not only have I cranked it down to six degrees, I've also changed the shaft. So I've got a 70 degree three wood shaft in here, which I'm gonna grip down. So the overall length of the club is much, much shorter. And I'm also going to be adding something to the driver. So the driver has been shortened. I've cranked that loft down. Now, the first thing that this is gonna enable me to do is find the center of the club face a little bit more. As that shaft gets a little bit shorter, I basically have that little bit more control. But what it does do is it looks fantastic when it's behind the ball because I am a little bit more in a posture where the club doesn't feel so far away. I do feel I have that little bit more control. Then gripping down it that little bit more, that's going to work as well. But just look what happens here. So I've got basically the driving range out here on the Foresight software. I'm going to hit five shots just straight off the bat. And let's have a look at the numbers. Let's have a look at the data. So using TP5 ball, ball position, nothing really changes here. <laughs> Phone likes it, camera likes it, watch likes it. Oh, twist faced it. Okay. Oh, that's a bit more like it. So, quick look through at the data here. Now, basically, you can see that my backspin is pretty low, which is was a bit of an issue for me, so I managed to control that. Side spin, generally off to the left-hand side. And offline, you can see those middle three, so 60 yards left, 26 yards left, 50 yards left, and then I topped and tailed it with a couple of decent shots. The actual distance <laughs> surprised me. Uh, 306, 295, 304, 299, 305. But look at the carry distance, so the carry distance pretty low. So with that setup, I actually struggle to hold that face square, and that's why I often find it going off to the left-hand side. So what happened if I messed around a little bit more? Now, if at all possible, I wanna slow the toe of this club down. If I can do that, I might be able to control that club face just a little bit more. So let's start adding a little bit of weight there. All right. So as you can see, I've added the weights here, these lead weights to the toe of the club. Now, what this is gonna do as I come through impact, it's gonna slow the rotation of that face down just a touch. And this should allow me to just try and square that club face up that little bit more. Now, if I could do that, it's gonna give me a low spinning, straight driving bullet train. So I can already feel the difference in this head weight. Remember, this is at the end of the shaft. So any weight you start to add at the club head, you're gonna feel it disproportionately more when you're holding that grip. Now I've added three of these lead strips to the toe. Now hopefully that should be enough that I can just swing through this with impunity. Yeah, a little bit like that. It's good, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, yeah. you seriously? How straight are these? I have to get a bit more confidence with them now as well. Finish on the line. Hold on. 
Now, I'm not going to say what an amazing engineer I am, um, well, because I'm not, but look at some of the differences that's actually happened with the ball data there. So my spin has gone slightly up. You can see the difference in what's happening to the axis tilt on the ball there. Carry distance overall is slightly up, apart from that first one, man. And total distance on average stays the same, although I didn't get one out there at 319. Now, the first thing to say is that was completely, completely unedited. Those were literally 10 shots in a row. So all the data there is exactly what I found. Ball striking was pretty decent. The majority of my strikes were towards the heel or the middle of the club. That's generally where I hit from. Now, because it's super low lofted, that allows me to control the spin. As I start to redistribute mass on the head, well, no, actually, that's a complete lie because I'm not redistributing. I'm adding mass to the club head. And that's why you've got to be always slightly careful. But if you add weight to the heel, that means it's going to close quicker. If you add weight to the toe of the club, that means you're going to have a little bit more opening of that club face coming through because it's hard to square the club face with the weight on the outside of the center of gravity. I think that's right anyway. But what I'm thinking is if I can start to change around that weight distribution, I can really start to hammer home some pretty low trash. <laughs> So I've got to be honest, hitting that drive out of the range was a lot of fun. Um, the actual spin or the lack of spin that I could get with it was pretty awesome in many cases. So I actually teeing it up that little bit higher and launching it high, it just came out with no spin and then adapting it to a lower tee to hit that stinger shot. Some of the trage I was getting was absolutely awesome. But let's delve into this weight a little bit more on the club head. So obviously I've added weight to the toe in an attempt to try and keep that club face a little bit more open coming through impact so it didn't go left. And at the driving range, I was finding that if I was going to miss, it's going off to the right hand side unless I hit it low out the heel and a bit of twisty face got involved. Now I do recommend you doing your own research into this because the amount of literature on adding weight to a club head in different parts and exactly how much you need to have to have any kind of effect, it is split in opinion. Bear in mind, each of those weights there is three grams. So the three weights that I added initially, one actually flew off at the range, that added up to obviously nine grams. Now that takes the total weight of my club head to 204 grams. Now that's the weight of the club head and the extra lead weights as well. That doesn't include shaft weight. So you've had to bear in mind about swing weight. First of all, how strong you are, how much club head speed you're generating. Because bear in mind, that driver, that beast of a bullet train driver, <laughs> I, who really struggled to keep spin down, was generating almost nothing. So giving that to a hand of someone who swings it 80, 90 miles an hour, it really would be of no use, even if you did crank up the loft. But if you are looking to especially change shape, so draws or fades, and trying to influence that, adding weight to a toe or a heel, like I said, it varies on what people think you need to add to have any kind of effect. It did seem to work for me. There's no guarantees that it can work for you. However, that tape, how much was that tape? That lead tape there in those little portions, I got that for eight pounds. Eight pounds? Literally looked at your phone two seconds ago. Seven pounds for eight pieces. So if you are struggling with a certain shot shape in your driver, what's the harm? What's the harm in getting something for seven quid and just trying to figure out if that's gonna work for you? But guys, hop down into those comments below. Let me know what you think about the Ultimate Speed Train Bullet Driver. <laughs> also, if you've modified any types of clubs and what you found as the results of being. Remember, if we share, we're all gonna learn more together. So guys, thank you so, so much for watching. If you are new to the channel, if you've not been here before, please hit that subscribe button, that like button. Like I said, jump down into those comments. And if you are a returning watcher, please consider hitting that subscribe button as well. And that bell icon, it really does help me out. Right guys, see you soon. Just wondering what else I can add these extra lead weights to. What about a wedge? What about a wedge? See if I can get more spin.